shoulder day. Do a quick warm up. And probably continue where I finished off yesterday, talking about my experience and this Vedic Indian school or Gurukul, call it as you like, that I studied in. Share a little bit of maybe the insight of what was happening there. <clears throat> yeah, so I think the first thing that I really liked about the place and you know the whole idea of it was for some reason, I don't know why it was, but it was cooking. I, I came into the school and I was very fascinated by the fact that you know, the boys and the teachers cook themselves everything. They don't have people that they hire to do the cooking. You cook and you clean. And I remember just like yesterday when I got there, I would, uh, the first few years. So we had this kind of schedule that I was talking about yesterday for most of the week. And then we have festivals, which we would participate in doing some stuff in the temple and then we had uh, holidays in between that we had 20 days a year where we actually had holidays where we could do things we wanted to do and I remember even on, on those days I would go to the school because we would get the opportunity to make you know some fancy Bengali dishes or learn something really fancy try it out and yeah, I remember coming to the school every day, 365 days a year uh, for the first couple of years. Oh, so I would spend hours in the kitchen and I enjoyed it, I loved it. I remember we were there the first time that, so they had, the teachers had this Bengali traditional old cookbook. I think the cookbook was around 100 years old and later on I even got to do some research on it and find some recipes and you know try cooking some stuff but we were there and we made this thing called poto dolma which basically is there is this funny looking Indian cucumber which is called poto which is you know a few inches long and maybe half an inch thick and you cut the top off peel the whole thing take out the insides, which are like these hard seeds, throw it away, then fry it. Then you have a filling, then you put that inside, and then you make a gravy, and you put that in the gravy, mixed with other, you know, spices. It took us like three, four hours to make it, but it was really tasty, and, you know, for some reason I just fell in love with that art, and I had the facility to learn how to do that, to spend time cooking, to later on, you know, even open up a little stall, during the festival times to sell the cooking. But yeah, that kind of interesting stuff was going on. Yeah, so besides the education that I was getting, you know, going for all the classes, the rest of my free time from between, I think from the very beginning, from like 11 years old till like 15, I spent most of that time in the kitchen. I became part of the kitchen group, which was a little bit out of the system, and we would just cook breakfast, lunch. You know, I figured out, uh, I didn't figure it out, but started learning Bengali, talking to, you know, the suppliers of the vegetables and other things. Then later on, when I was 15, 16, started going shopping a few times a month to get, you know, groceries from Kolkata learned how to do that, you know, learned the whole market. It was a whole new fun experience every year during the festival. Since I was 12, we'd open a stall where we would cook specific items, you know, that we learned how to make, then we'd sell them to the community, which, yeah, got me even more inspired because I was interested in making some money too. So yeah, that was, these were the kind of experiences I remember the first time I did this shop and the festival. I was super excited. We were working for 14 days and, uh, well, I was like 13 or 12 years old, so I didn't know anything about business, but I knew that I should make something and I sell it and then hopefully I'll have a profit margin. 
that was my idea at least in the beginning so we're selling we're selling we're ordering stuff from the you know the suppliers and we got everything together every day we would sell for uh, maybe three four thousand rupees and then at the end of it all i had like collected fifty thousand which at that time was i don't know like eight hundred nine hundred dollars that i thought that i made and then the milk guy came he asked for money paid him i think it was fifteen or twenty thousand and the supplier of the vegetables came he asked for money and at the end of it all once i paid everybody i was left with like seven thousand rupees and i was super upset i started crying i went and i gave them to my teacher he was like it's okay as long as you tried you made a little bit of profit you learned but yeah it was a very beautiful experience <sighs> yes i was doing the shop when did i start it so i was 12 when i did the first shop and then the last one i did when i was 18. so six years or six or seven years maybe 19 i did the shop every year and the first one i remember it you know like it was yesterday made what was that at the end i counted seven and a half thousand rupees of profit i think the ratio back then was like 60 rupees to a dollar uh, a hundred something bucks and then the last shop experience that i did oh, was uh, in 2018 yeah 18 we made 200,000 rupees profit in 12 or 14 days just of cooking so we would go shop get all the ingredients together had a team had a core team of four more people and then we had two stalls we had six sellers we made like a whole menu we had lasagna we had pasta we had salad we had sweets and cakes and you know and yeah we would cook we would start cooking at like 4 a.m getting everything ready chopping veggies sell from 7 to 10 a.m then take a little break go shop for the next day cook prepare go to sleep at like 10 and then like that without a break for 14 days but yeah we made like three grand us gave it all to our teachers it was a wonderful experience at that time i was also after a few years i started taking care of the other shop the physical shop which was there you know all year round making some money there and you know it was a, actually a very wonderful experience because i got to practice learn business make mistakes uh, and not really pay any consequences for that you know because i was in school and yeah i think it was very important it helped me a lot to grow as a person to learn get a lot of very useful experience from my life and you know develop and grow from that so i'm very grateful for that oh, oh boy. yeah so that was kind of my life for the first uh five six years then at one point it got fully kicked out of the kitchen not in the sense that i did something wrong but i was speaking to a friend who was if you remember and you watched yesterday's video i was talking about that head boy system so the head boy was in charge of all the departments so he was a friend of mine a good friend of mine and he said that i should uh, leave the kitchen and learn how to deal with human beings and not just pots and pans sorry i'm gonna be doing the other hand and so he kicked me out got me out of there made me a group leader i was very much against it i really didn't like that decision because i was you know just making it almost there being the kitchen in charge fully and i was taken out Whew. and yeah so then i went up that ladder so i was a group leader for around six months then i became vice head boy and then within one and a half or two years i became the head boy for a year which was quite intense it was a really good experience not in the pleasant way of it but in the way that you know you learn how to manage things you learn how to actually be a leader inspire people inspire kids your friends peers juniors seniors and you know manage the whole thing make sure everything is on time make sure everybody's dressed happy you know basically you're actually the ceo of the whole thing if you call it a company and that was a heck of an experience. I got in trouble a lot and 
you know, all that kind of stuff that comes with it. But overall, it was intense, but uh, quite interesting. Also, we didn't have, just to put things in perspective, we're living in a place which had basically no lights, no, not much electricity except for in the main building, which was quite small, and we all slept, you know, in under the grass roof with no doors in huts and just had mosquito nets and you know we had no phones it was literally like people used to live maybe 500 years ago or maybe even more that that was the kind of lifestyle that was the kind of idea would wear you know just pieces of cloth we would not wear anything stitched even the underwear was made from two pieces of cloth uh yeah and that was the kind of life we're living just living in our own little bubble in a bubble in a bubble you know far away from the real world Yeah, so that was kind of the experience in that sense, a few stories. I think the most the, oh, an interesting part of it was also the fact that, you know, you made a lot of friends and when you're living, because we're living there at that point, you know, I joined the ashram when I was 12, maybe, yeah, just turned 12. And... Uh, living there with friends, we became, uh, you know, friends for life because you lived with a person literally 24-7, you know, 340 days a year and you slept together and you did service together, you, you know, we all had our own mosquito nets and a little locker, but overall it was basically life together and we bonded really well and we went through a lot of difficult times and had a lot of meaningful talks and Thank God we had no smartphones because otherwise we'll be on our smartphones all the time. But we actually had a life and that was very valuable actually. To be honest, I would, you know, I wouldn't trade it, trade that for anything else. The relationships that I have made, the experiences that I got, the real life that I had living, that I was living at that time, the friendships, it was amazing. We still keep in touch. We still, uh, everybody's everywhere all over the world because it was an international school. You know, kids from Australia, America, Europe, Africa, some Indians, uh, Dubai, you know, you name it, Brazil, South America, all over the world. You know, we were there together, doing all of those things together, learning together. Everybody pursued some sort of passion that they had to some degree or another. And yeah, we really bonded, which was really, really cool. Yeah, I'm just thinking what other stories to tell you. <sighs> oh, we would go on trips all over India. That's, that was also really cool. We had this thing that we would go... Oh, it's harder to speak upside down. <sighs> oh. Whew. We had this thing, a program where we would go once a year, the whole school, uh, to some place in India and, you know, travel around or stay in one place, stay in a few places, but we called it like a pilgrimage to a holy place. So yeah, in the 11 years that I was there, I traveled practically to every state. I mean, I think I've been to every state in India by now, but practically to every state I traveled during my time there in Gurukul. And yeah, it was... It was really fun, you know, going by train, you have a train and like 50 kids, you know, we booked. We would go to Calcutta to the main office to book, you know, the whole coach for all of us. And yeah, we would arrange it, you know, make burgers on the, on the train, pass them around. If you have ever traveled in an Indian, you know, train, you know what it is. It's quite fun. I mean, sometimes it can be hectic, but you know, when you have 50 kids, it's hectic for those who are managing, but in the beginning I wasn't managing. I was having lots of fun. The end was a little more difficult because we arranged, me and a few friends in our last few years, we arranged the parikram like that ourselves. It was quite intense, but yeah, overall it was a great, fun experience. I remember, well, I don't know what year it was, we decided to make burgers in the train. The train was like 26 hours or 28 hours. We were going to South India. We're making burgers in the train, you know, jumping out at night, having fun, just talking, staying up, 
it's just a whole, you know, it's like a thrill to live that kind of life with your friends. It's just, uh, you know, I'm thinking about it now, just saying these stories out loud. I'm having so many beautiful memories come back and, you know, images that uh, I wish to relive again because it was amazing. Oh. Yeah, so that was pretty much the experience with a lot more. I'm gonna have to make a third part of this because I've just been covering all the most positive things. I'll be realistic with you, there was some negative in there too. Again, I wouldn't trade it for anything else, the whole experience overall, but you know, it wasn't exactly just uh what do you say what's that english saying uh, anyway i don't know it wasn't just all beautiful there 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 were a lot of flaws and funny interesting stories which i got in trouble for and had a very difficult time and remember almost quitting and you know for some silly reasons but anyway i'll talk about that tomorrow probably then since we've decided that it's a three-part series and yeah the cut is coming soon I'm also excited for that so stay tuned I actually like this format I don't know do you guys like it whoever watch till the end if you watch till the end I guess you do like it but it's more interesting for me I think it's more interesting for for you guys let me know comment below if you like it peace out